part five of back influencer workouts. Let me show you how to train the right way. Back is a tricky body part, right? Because we see the old school bodybuilding, which is all barbell rows, T-bar rows, deadlifts, pull-ups, right? And then you see all the new school stuff where it's like sideways and banded and twisting and pinkies and all types of geometry with compasses and rulers. So which is the right way? What are people getting right? What are people getting wrong? So what I thought I'd do here is go through three very common exercises that I see done all over the internet each week and they're promising huge backs, massive lats, just all types of snake oil. <laughs> so let's start here with exercise number one, the sideways lat pull down. You're telling me you're gonna outsmart hammer strength? <laughs> Good luck. Dorian Yates, who had one of the best backs of all time, swore by this piece in facing into it the right way, not facing sideways. So, hey, yes, can you feel a fully shortened lat? Yes, you can. But you can't adequately load this thing. It's not by any means an incredible exercise. So with this kicking off with a lat pull down sideways and a hammer strength piece, I really challenge you, face forward, do it the right way. It's not one of my exercises, but if you were gonna use this piece, don't waste your time on it. All right, next up, this kneeling cable row. Now, what you'll see people do is like, oh, I'm stretching that lat, and I'm coming back, and I'm gonna squeeze and twist. Stretch, twist, squeeze. If you're a jack dude with low body fat, and they're colorfully highlighting their lat, you're gonna be like, oh my word, I have to do this exercise. And in the grand scheme of life, if you were doing this as an activation, right, to come in the gym, get as a warm up for the back, for activating the lat fibers before we get into the things where we can really load it adequately, this is a great exercise. But this is not NOT meat and potatoes. This will not pack on slabs of muscle to your back. What this will do is make you look cute in the gym. <laughs> you'll look really smart, you'll look fancy, but I'm telling you, this isn't like a dumbbell row. This isn't like a hammer strength machine row. This is not comparable because I had 30 pounds on there. We're on a hammer strength row that you see me doing multiple videos on three, four, or five plates aside on that bad boy. So you can't tell me that 30 pounds versus five plates is gonna be the same amount of stimulus for that lat to grow. So again, this is a great activation exercise, but it is not something I would leave as a staple into your program. The renegade row, hey, listen, at least the name sounds cool, right? And I know that you guys probably saw Joe Rogan do these and thought, oh man, he's Jack, I gotta do these. But in the grand scheme of life, I view that as cardio, right? And people say, oh, Chris, but I'm working my core while I'm doing this. You could. Or you could just go do regular fucking dumbbell rows. <laughs> Listen, all this fancy stuff is exactly what the name is. It's fancy. It's cute. It's not going to pack on slabs of muscle that you guys are after by watching my channel. We'll get you hurried up, yes. If I had limited equipment in my home gym, could I do it? Yes. But at the end of the day, if you're going to do these with this weight, why wouldn't you just do this? The double arm dumbbell row. Not one of my top three exercises. I load my wreckers, I get a full stretch of the lat, and I'm still getting a good row in. So those same pieces of equipment can do the same thing. So I challenge you, scrap the running aid row, throw it away, and let's get into the three that I recommend. One of the back exercises that I want you guys to do and do weekly and get good at. So if you notice here, there's a neutral grip, shoulder width, grip, pull down. I like this over the hammer swing because one, I'm braced, meaning I'm pinning myself to the floor with the knee pad, driving my feet down so I can get leverage and pull with the lat. I like the neutral grip because it aligns really perfectly for me hitting my lat fibers. And then lastly here, it just feels incredible. <laughs> I can load it heavy, I can progress with it weekly, and I can really pay close attention to my form when I film my set. So with this, this is not a fancy or cute exercise. This is something that I have all of my clients and athletes do. I love them. Some people love pull-ups, and I think pull-ups are a great exercise if you feel them. Some don't or aren't good enough or aren't strong enough to do those. So this is why I'm putting on here as a staple and something I would look to start almost every back workout with. Guess where I'm at? The dumbbell rack. <laughs> what am I gonna do? The step forward dumbbell row. Let me show you some of these reps. This is my bread and butter. You do lat pull down, so you come up here and do single arm dumbbell rows, hard and heavy, either off the top of the rack or the bottom, whatever feels best to you in your lower back, meaning your lower back health. So with this, I've found that some clients, when I put them on that low rack, it just makes your lower back cramp or get locked up. 
We don't want that. So play around with the height of your starting position, and that will dictate which one you choose. So ten is exercise. If you whatever arm you row with, put that leg forward, and it will take a little bit of getting used to. I know you'll see most of those times done the opposite way, meaning if you're rowing with the right arm, your left foot is forward. It just puts you in a position where you can get a lot of the parts of your body into it, your legs, your lower back, torso, and we don't want that. So with this, it is a stricter form of a row, which is why I like it and to really target my lat. So lat pull downs, then we're gonna come up here and do a dumbbell row, top set back off, drop set, crazy, as John would say, like championship set or analytic set. <laughs> brutality set, whatever you want to call that, where you're just ripping weight until you can't stand up straight anymore. So with this guy's bread and butter, I will do these weekly. If I don't have an injury, it's just something in my head that I know I feel good and connect with. So exercise number two, the dumbbell row. Exercise number three, and it's going to be a rack pull. Not only is this great for my records, but it's total back thickness and also traps. So a really great exercise. Now, this is something I see people do really, really wrong. They misplace where to put the bar. So I'm going to get a chance to swing around and show where this hits my knee at the bottom of my kneecap. That's where I want it. Now, I know a lot of people will say, oh, Chris, like I want it to be mid-shin. If I'm gonna do mid-shin, I might as well just pull off the ground. <laughs> a rack pull to me is right below the kneecap. Number two that I see a mistake done with this often is banging it off the rack, bouncing the reps. If you notice, I'm only gonna do five here, but every single rep should look like this, no matter if I have one plate or six aside on it. As I said, I love this for thickness, I love this for the rectors, and I also love it for traps. So. If you do this right and properly, I like this at the very end of your back day. So if I'm again, only doing three back exercises, this is what I would do. Especially if you're beginner and immediate. This will target every muscle you have in your back and make it grow and look big and freaking. If you get really strong at it, they will all work. So get back to this rack pull. I like it again, as I said, at the end, anywhere between a top set and a back off. I've even done like five sets of five with this. John for years would have me just do one big just death set. <laughs> All work really, really well. So again, pay close attention to that form. Every rep is pulsed off the rack. It's right below the kneecap. My back is flat. When I come up, I'm actually squeezing my entire back from traps to glutes. So this is an incredible exercise. You can easily track this for progressive overload and pound, pack those plates on. But just don't be guilty of sacrificing weight for form or vice versa, sacrificing form for weight because that will get you injured. At the same time, you don't need to look super cute, right? This is an exercise that's about moving weight with good form, so don't be scared of that. So if you compare the first three of influencers and the last three with mine, notice that there's drastically different. <laughs> and the chief thing with all of these is the amount of load you can take on the first three versus the second three, and then just brutal in your face, hard exercises versus fluff. So again, I know the influencer workouts look good on the internet, and when someone's jacked and lean, those exercises just light up their back like a Christmas tree. But I promise you, those guys and girls got that back from the three I just showed you. So if you like this video, guys, like, share, subscribe. Until next time, credit TV.